Hello everybody and welcome back to Coding with Kennedy. Now we're at episode 16 and we have just uh, gotten our uh, movement uh, working and a selection of uh, actors to move to a tile. Uh, this system is working but this game is a turn-based game and uh, we should only be uh, allowed to select uh, units on our, uh, our actors. Uh, which is a currently playing faction. We're gonna do that very soon and implement a turn-based uh, controller. But uh, I thought I'd break it up this episode to just make a little bit of UI uh, to give the players some information about the state of the game. And uh, we're gonna use that to display whose turn it is and stuff like that a little bit later. So let's get to it. Uh, let's create a uh, UI. Uh, I'm gonna create an empty and we are going to position as 0, 0, 0 and this is going to be called the game UI and underneath of that there we place the canvas canvas, there we go and uh, this guy we're going to have an UI at the top of our game screen here so we're going to add a panel and uh, I'm gonna stretch it out to the top and then uh, I'm just gonna drag it in a little bit there we go just gonna navigate uh, in the scene view here so we see things a little bit more clearly and uh, let's give that uh, maybe a I think uh, yeah shouldn't be too big right when we press play this should not uh, overlap too much of our uh, current uh, game yeah so something like that uh, about uh, 110 pixels and then I need to uh, reposition there we go uh, this is how we're gonna work with UI are you gonna uh, First of all, we use this panel as a sort of a layout panel. And then we have a, another under panel of that. I'm gonna have like this information about the game. Uh, we're gonna have two informational pieces. We're gonna have the number of attackers, so the attacker faction present, and uh, how many actors of the defender faction present in the game. This is going to be updated every time we capture a unit, uh, uh, for example, stuff like that. And I think we're going to have that in the upper right. And it's also going to be a what I call a turn displayer, which is uh, some sort of visual element that uh, tells you, the player, which uh, uh, faction is now. It's, uh, who is uh, the currently playing faction. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Under panel, we're gonna create another under panel. And this guy, he's gonna stretch all the way in height and uh, be anchored at the right side. And then I'm gonna pull him in from the left side. So, shoop, like that. And I think that this width could be something like 550, okay. And this is the this is the panel right here, and underneath it, we're gonna have um, two, or actually three more panels. Uh, so first of all, the first one is gonna be uh, stretched all the way at the to the uh, in width and uh, be at the bottom and uh, we can make this uh, how high should it be mm. probably like uh, 50 and this is gonna contain uh, our um, kind of visual uh, turn uh, displayer 
just going to be a box that's uh, going to slide back and forth to show whose turn it is. So this is a turn displayer uh, panel. Uh, this is uh, uh, yeah, what should we call this panel? Maybe a game information panel. And this is the top uh, top panel. Yeah, I think that's works. Uh, turn display panel. Okay, and uh, we're gonna need another panel here, uh, or actually two of them. Uh, the first one is uh, gonna be the attacker panel. This guy uh, is then going to be uh, anchored uh, to the upper right, upper left, sorry. Then we're going to uh, do a five, 550 divided by 2. Uh, you can do math inside of these uh, fields and then it's just going to sort it out for you. Uh, then again anchor at the uh, top right and then I'm just gonna drag this out so it uh, is at the height 60 I'm gonna duplicate the attacker panel and rename it to defender panel I'm gonna anchor that in upper right and here underneath each of these panels uh, First, the attacker panel. I'm going to add a UI text of Text Mesh Pro. Uh, so this is uh, just going to be a, a attacker label. A label is just something that uh, it's not going to be dynamically updated. Uh, this guy can be uh, anchored to a uh, left uh, and stretched in the height so it's stretching out in this panel here and uh, we can uh, set the text uh, to middle so it's in the middle here and uh, for the text we just write attacker it also looks a little bit ugly we need to uh, add uh, some margins so this is a uh, in extra settings we're gonna have a 10 pixel margin I think on the left side so it just uh, bumps in a little bit from the outside here attacker uh, or uh, actually attackers in plural uh, let's see how we do with layout maybe we can uh, shrink this in a little bit we can also change the color of the text by changing the vertex color. This guy can be uh, red. A nice little thing to do is to add an outline onto, um, onto text to make it a little bit more clear. Yeah. Uh, Maybe it's not more clear. Hmm. Usually helps. Ah, never mind. We can uh, make the text bold. Maybe I'm not gonna deal too much with the visuals uh, in this uh, series. I'm just gonna focus on presenting actually the information that we need here. Um, so it's not going to be like super pretty, but uh, you're going to get the gist of uh, like the structure or everything, which helps out a lot, I think, for people. Under the attacker panel, I'm going to add another UI text uh, of TextMesh Pro. This is going to be anchored on uh, right with the stretch in height. And then we're going to pull this guy in to fit with this. Uh, label 
this is going to be the attacker count text. This is dynamic text. This is going to be updated from code. code. Let's uh, write uh, 24, uh, which would be uh, the number if uh, every attacker were present on the board. And we center it and uh, put it in the middle. Uh, okay. And uh, likewise for the defenders, uh, we should actually def delete the defender panel because we can just duplicate the attacker panel with this information again. So I'm going to duplicate the attacker panel, rename it to defender panel, and then anchor this in top right, uh, rename uh, this to defender label and uh, defender count text uh, and we need to rename this to defenders and we can uh, change the color of uh, that one to uh, an ivory uh, yellow there we go and uh, the default of this will be 13 if all defenders present mm, on the board okay uh, actually for uh, the presentation in this tutorial I'm gonna write zero on the count uh, on both of these because these guys are going to be updated through code and then we can test some functionality uh, to see that in action so these guys can just stay at zero. They will be updated uh, uh, through an event. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, let's do something with this turn display panel. Here we're gonna have a, um, uh, could be an image maybe? Yeah. Could be an image. Uh, and this guy, he's gonna stretch uh, out in height, yeah, and it's going to be middle uh, relative to middle position, and then we take his his width can be the width of this is uh, oh it's not uh, we can't see that but uh, if I were to go here and stretch this guy out to here. That will be 270 pixels. So I'm gonna put his uh, width at 270 pixels and then I'm gonna recenter him again because this guy is gonna slide back and forth uh, depending on whose turn it is. I'm just gonna uh, change the color of the image component here to uh, a bright yellow. Something like this. And uh, we can also help the user out by understanding what the what this uh, thing even is. So we can add an, uh, a, te a label text onto it. Uh, with the uh, black color for now. And uh, this guy is just gonna stretch out uh, completely inside uh, this uh, component. And uh, it's just gonna say turn, like so. Uh, turn label. And this is the turn displayer image okay um, we're gonna uh, create some scripts to handle these uh, guys but uh, for now we just set up the UI <coughs> and this uh, guy is gonna start out in the middle and then it's gonna move to a position um, based on um, the state of the current game uh, 
maybe we should make some animation. Uh, this image can be animated. So we can create uh, two animations for it and a, a little animator to control uh, what it's supposed to do. So when we create an animator through uh, animation uh, window, uh, it will immediately add an animator component to this uh, object. So we create uh, and in our uh, assets folder, we can create a new folder called animations. Inside that folder, it makes sense to create a folder called UI. And inside of here, we're going to say uh, turn displayer uh, underscore attacker turn well, I'm just thinking if I should uh, move this guy to uh, should I move this guy by an animation or should I move him through code mm -mm 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 -mm. just let me think for two seconds Hmm. Let's just cancel that uh, just now. Uh, and in the scene, if I were to move him here, that would be a target position on the axe. Okay, yeah, we can move him through code instead because we. Uh, we need to move from current position to target position. So yeah, we're going to move him through code. Um, cool. But in order to uh, make these uh, things update, we need to uh, kind of start the game. Uh, the game can be formally started in the game controller. Um, like I've been talking a little bit about, uh, things uh, move in sequence, right? So we kind of create the board, then we uh, put the actors onto the board and uh, register them with the board. And once all of that is completed, then we can uh, kind of start the game. In our case for now, we can probably start the game after uh, at least uh, the actors have been instantiated and are present on the board. Uh, this might change. Uh, let's say you uh, added uh, some sort of animation to, uh, to these guys. They uh, drop from the ceiling onto the board or they animate, they come in from the side and walk onto the board or something. Then you need to kind of structure things after that but for now we can just start somewhere so I think that uh, we will uh, create a, a private function inside our game controller which is the start game function private void start game uh, and we should probably take in a parameter called Oh, uh, yeah, and uh, we need to make some more stuff. So I'm going to navigate to the enums uh, script or file. And we're, we are going to create uh, a new enum. So it's a public enum and it's called faction. So our actors belong to a faction either uh, either the attacker uh, underscore faction or defender underscore faction. We don't really need this underscore because it's implicit since we are, we are yet again talking about faction but it can in some cases help to separate uh, when we are uh, flying back and forth between faction and actor type. 
uh, count and we should uh, usually have a null at the start so I'm gonna write none there so that uh, we can catch uh, if we uh, set something incorrectly okay uh, so now we have a faction enum um, and our actors is going to belong to a faction so uh, we can have this as a, maybe a private field again private Ooh. whoa 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 autocorrect private faction my faction equals faction dot none uh, and we're gonna serialize this field with an attribute again let's create a little getter uh, uh, public faction get faction return my faction cool uh, we have to set this in the prefab uh, which uh, faction uh, an actor belongs to so in prefab folder uh, the king is uh, belong he belongs to the defender faction and also the defender prefab belongs to the defender faction but the attacker prefab belongs to the attacker faction cool save save project um, and then yeah, so we uh, in a game controller, controller, in the start game function, which we are are working on, right? We write, man. Sometimes these these words they just uh, get a little bit broken. Sorry. Uh, faction, starting faction. Uh, so by default. Uh, Viking Chess Neftafel or Neftafel uh, and its variations they usually start with uh, the attacker faction starting first uh, just so you know uh, so we're gonna have some sort of uh, default setup in the game controller and later something else might affect this uh, for example you load a saved game and who uh, who is the starting faction when we start the game right that might be the defender if we load a save game but that stuff comes uh, down the line for now faction starting faction are there any more variables we need to start the game mm. do, 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 do. no I don't think so uh, so uh, we're gonna have a static uh, function inside the game, static event inside the game controller, uh, which is uh, going to be called public uh, static event system dot action uh, with a payload of. Um, hmm, We're gonna send in the board at least, so a tile to the array, and we probably wanna tell the world uh, how many a list of actors that are present in the game, probably. Uh, yeah. Should we start there and uh, we can uh, update this as we go if we need more uh, on start game this event is called so I'm gonna create a summary for this so the uh, payload at position 0 is uh, the board at the start of the game and one is the list of actors present in the game at the start of the game. Uh, 
maybe we need to uh, add some more uh, payloads to this guy. But uh, for now, uh, does something need to happen here before we tell the world that the game has started? Um, you're probably gonna apply uh, a turnover at this point, uh, but we can we can fire off this uh, event on start game. Invoke, uh, and then we call board dot instance dot get board, and then. A list of actors and then we need to create this list of actors and this uh, comes from either the board itself or uh, we can make this a little bit simpler because when we spawn the formation that we are now playing uh, we um, we can then save uh, yeah I have a plan okay let's go uh, -ta 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 -ta. Uh, what's it called again so something spawner right um, actor selector structs formation. Actor select button. Formation spawner. That's right. So after we have instantiated all of our actors, I think that we are going to modify this guy a little bit and uh, let game controller kind of start the game once it receives an event from formation spawner that all the guys have been spawned. Then we are quite safe because then we are doing things in sequence, which is good. So the formation spawner can have an event. This could also be a static event. So public static event system dot action with a payload or list of actor. And uh, this is on um, on actors uh, instantiated. And a summary here, the list of actors uh, instantiated into the game present on the board. Because I think this class, uh, yeah, we assign, uh, when we instantiate uh, an actor, we also uh, assign it to a tile. So it's occupying a tile. That's cool. The only thing we need to do um, is to have a, an extra list here, a list of actor. And we call this actors equals new list. And every time we instantiate uh, a guy, we're going to add that to this list. This is, by the way, in the uh, function spawn formation. So we say actors.add a, which is the guy that we have just instantiated. And after we have run through this for loop, then we invoke the uh, event I just created. So on actors instantiated, I invoke, and then we send in the list of actors. There we go. Uh, because the game controller is very interested in keeping uh, track of the, the actors that are present in the game, and he will also modify that list as the game goes on uh, removing actors that are uh, destroyed uh, and stuff like that so this uh, event our game controller 
is going to listen to that event. We're going to create an event handler. And we're going to call this private void on actors instantiated. And we take in a list of actor, actor, actors. Okay. Mm. And we just want to save this uh, in a private field. So a private list of actor. And this is the uh, list. Uh, we can be explicit about what this is. This is a current active actors equals new list. Uh, current active actors in game. This uh, this is a list that will be updated uh, throughout the game uh, until tell uh, the world around it when this uh, the game controller is gonna tell the world when this gets uh, updated uh, so the list that we get in here actors we're just gonna save it current active actors equals actors and then we need to uh, actually listen to the uh, formation spawner formation spawner dot on actors instantiated plus equals on actors instantiated. Mm, there we go. And also desubscribe. There we go. And now we have this. And in our case, for now, we call start game here. Uh, and we're going to call start game. And for now, we set the default to faction.attacker. Um, this might change later, but uh, I think you get the point there. So uh, we call start game. Good, good, good. The starting faction of attacker on start game, and uh, we send in uh, the current active actors. Uh, good, 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 good. Um, and then check time. Oh, we're actually a little bit out of time. This took a little bit longer than expected, but okay. This means that we're ready to uh, update our UI once the game starts. Uh, because this uh, event that we just created uh, is going to be very helpful for other elements in the game to set up their initial variables. Like for example, we're going to update the attacker count and the defender count and uh, whose turn it is once we start the game. We're going to do that in the next episode, uh, so thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you very soon.